What's going on everyone? Welcome to Texas Hunter Channel. If you're new here, definitely consider subscribing. So today the pilot is getting some fresh coil packs. Um, I got all six of them. This is needed done for a while. Um, it has a slight misfire sometimes and it pops a code every once in a while for it. I've already replaced the plugs with brand new iridiums um, in here and it didn't help. I mean it ran a little bit better but it didn't help the problem. Um, so it's most likely the coil packs. We're just going to replace the coil packs and I'm going to be installing this rear engine mount as well. I already replaced the engine mount that is right here. Um, kind of hard to see. It's super easy. There's three bolts that had to be removed. They were all uh, 14 millimeter bolts and then one 17 bolt that goes right through it supported the engine. I didn't get video of that, but I'm going to try to get video of the rear mount. It is a really hard, tight space back there, so I'll do my best to show you how to remove it. Um, so this thing's been running great other than that slight misfire, and it's not even that noticeable um, for everyone else that rides in it or drives the thing. They don't even notice it, but as a mechanic, you definitely notice these small things like that. Um, and these coil packs are all original, and uh, yeah. Same with this engine mount back here that's completely torn up. It's been torn up for like three years now. Um, and when you give it gas, the uh, engine will go thunk. And it, transmission shifts great, so it's not that. It's been doing it for three years. If it was a transmission problem, uh, a transmission would have given out by now, especially to and from Texas to Kansas, back and forth. That's a lot of miles. It's eight hours one direction. So, um, yeah, we're going to go ahead and I'm going to put you on the tripod and get some light in here so you can see what I'm doing. I'll time elapse it a little bit for you so it's more enjoyable to watch. So, hope you guys enjoy it. So, here we go. <laughs> Okay, so just a quick comparison here. These are the brand new ones here, which I'll leave a link in the description where I got these. Um, as you can see, this one's pretty nasty. It's pretty gross. None of the seals were leaking, so there's no reason it should look like that. I think this one was the one that was causing issues. But um, we're going to get the other three out back taken out, and then we'll uh, put these ones in. Okay, now we've got all six out. These are the front ones here. Um, these are the back. The back look really good. And pretty much all of them look good except for this one. So it was probably just this one giving us issues this whole time. But we went ahead and replaced all six. Also, um, if you didn't know, the J-Series coil packs right here, these actually are the same exact ones as the uh, D17. So if you ever needed to find a coil pack in the junkyard and they didn't have any J-Series, but they had a buttload of EM2s with the D-17s. These are the exact same part number. So, figured I'd just tell you guys that. But uh, now we got to put this rear mount in. Um, I'll have to show you how hard of a space back there it really is. So, um, I'm gonna start it up, make sure it's running fine, and then we'll move on to that. Sounds good. Nice. Okay. So on the back side of the intake manifold area is the best place I think I can show you. You see right down there, this is the motor mount. Underneath this hose, right there. Um, you can barely see it, but there's a 17 millimeter bolt on that side. You'll have to get that from the top. And then underneath there will be 
I believe, three 14 millimeter bolts that hold the motor mount in. This is not a very easy task to do, um, but if you do it enough times, it'll feel easier. But uh, let me try to get a different angle. Okay, so you can see it a little bit better there. That's where the 17 millimeter bolt is to remove it. And then underneath you have the three 14 millimeter bolts, um, which I'll show you from underneath. It's pretty tight squeeze. It's not very easy to get in there, but the more you do it, the easier it gets. Um, so I'm gonna go ahead and go underneath and show you how to get to the bolts from below. Okay, using a piece of two by four and a jack, I have it supporting the engine and transmission. So that way when I remove the 17 millimeter bolt, it doesn't drop down. So going underneath here, up in this area, I'm gonna show you where the bolts are. Okay, so underneath here, you have a downpipe. Um, it's easier to get these out with it off, but you can do it without even removing the downpipe. So you basically would just use a swivel socket like this on these 14 millimeter yellow bolts, which I already pre-loosened. As you can see, it gets right up in there perfectly fine. Um, just use some extensions and a swivel and you can get to them. So I'll undo both of those 14 millimeter bolts. As you can see, you can get to both of them just fine with a swivel socket and some extensions. Um, but now that you get both of those done, if you move back right here, you can see that there's another 14 millimeter bolt. It's a longer one. You'll go ahead and undo that one as well. And then all you have to worry about is that 17 millimeter bolt that's easier to get from the top. So I'm gonna go ahead and remove this. I would record all this, but uh, no way to actually secure the camera. So I'm just gonna go ahead and remove those. Okay, I got it out. I wanted to show you. It's starting to crack right there. This one's not as bad as I thought it would be, but we're still replacing it anyways. Um, this one is definitely stiffer. I checked the stiffness. Um, now the easiest way I found to get it out after you remove the 17 is through here. That's how I just got it out. Take some maneuvering and wiggling it around, but then it'll slide up over and then out. Um, and my arm is really scratched up because of it. So just be prepared for that if uh, you're using this method. So now I'm going to go ahead and put the new one in. Okay, well, I got the rear engine mount in. It's all tightened down and nice and secure. So we've officially replaced the rear and this side one. Uh, I'm still gonna replace the one down here, which I'll do in a separate video, and that side transmission one over there, because that one is completely destroyed. Um, so just these two mounts should make a difference, but obviously all of them need replaced for it to be a full, true difference. Um, so new coil packs, I have the new plugs that I put in prior to these coil packs, and the new motor mounts. So I'm going to take it out for a test drive. We'll see exactly how it accelerates, how it idles, and how it's just driving. So here we go. <laughs> definitely starts up a little easier than it used to. So that's definitely a good sign. Okay, here we go. definitely accelerating a lot easier than it did before um, and that hesitation that slight misfire I was talking about is no longer doing it um, even just cruising here I don't feel it like I was so I think those coil packs definitely did the trick and with the uh, engine mounts getting replaced one at a time it's definitely making a difference so super happy uh, now I'm gonna head back to the house well, we can officially knock all that off of the long list of things that need done or needed done to the pilot. I'm just super happy that it's running great now. Um, I will have a separate video where I clean this up, get this thing all ready for the install. I'm going to go ahead and clean it up and paint it. Um, I'm probably just going to keep this 3.8 pulley on just because I don't want to over boost or anything. I'm going to have to do an ESM from CompTech in order to get this thing to retard the timing whenever it senses boost. Um, because they don't exactly have a compatible ECU that I know of yet that can run the automatic uh, transmission on the pilot. So, 
Can't wait for this thing to go in. Still have to buy the $500 uh, adapter plate kit, which will block off, like I said in the previous video, it'll block off the stock intake manifold and then move my throttle up here. I already have the belt uh, in my shopping cart so I can get that for this. It's about $35 for that belt for this, but it's gonna be worth it. A supercharged Honda Pilot. I mean, I haven't seen any, I've seen like one picture of one, but I've never actually seen any uh, there's no videos of them running or how to install the supercharger on these, which this is the same thing as the Acura MDX engine, and uh, it works the same for the J-Series Accord. So the method pretty much is universal for all the J-Series, even the Honda Ridge lines. But yeah, super happy. Can't wait to put that in. Um, just working on the funds right now because $550 just for the adapter plate and then like $160 for the ESM. Uh, and then a few other little odds and ends, so I got to save up for it, but Got that done at least one one less thing I have to do, but uh Definitely stay tuned definitely subscribe if you're new here. Um, please hit the like button drop a comment below uh, I'm just trying to get you guys content weekly like I promised and uh, Doing the best I can with what I have so I hope you guys enjoyed the video if you did Please subscribe turn the bell icon on to get notified of every upload and drop a comment below and hit the like button so I'm going to go ahead and get off here. I'll see you guys in the next one. As I like to say, God bless, stay safe, stay awesome.